So when we're looking at brain health, then we're looking at the ketogenic diet, higher fat, moderate protein, low carbohydrate. We're looking at tacking, I'm, I'm going to say this, tack on a little fasting window. And when, then that does lead, like, do we need to look at like processed carbs versus what I call nature's carbs? Like, d- does the carb quality matter? Because if I have a donut and I'm like, oh, well, I just had a do- one donut today. I didn't have the whole box. And then I ate some more protein. Like, do I still need in my diet to make sure that I nail the quality of food? The, for carbohydrates, the quality of the carbohydrate matters ju- and the quantity matters. So the quantity and the quality both matter. So, and, and, and the reason is that the body was designed to process food for you. It wasn't designed mm-hmm. to take in pre-processed food foods. It wasn't designed to take in pre-digested naked carbohydrates. It was designed to eat a piece of fruit or or a starchy vegetable and break down those cells um, and digest that food for you and slowly access the nutrients and the sugars and starches inside of of those cells. If Mm. you strip, if if you pre-digest that food, if if you're drinking juice, a big glass of juice, which would have been very, very difficult to come by for our ancestors. If you're, you know, eating products made with flour all day long, imagine how much work it would take to make a bag of flour. And so there's there's a whole chapter in the book about the difference between processed carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, and as you say, call them natural carbohydrates. These are carbohydrates from whole foods. Big difference. The body can tell the difference. The body responds differently to foods that have had their cellular integrity destroyed. Mm. There are some hormones in the gut that pay attention to the quality of food, not just the quantity. And so mm. you're exactly right. It is, and, and your satiety hormones and your fullness, your the fullness sensors in your gut, you're, if you're eating an apple, that's got lots of fiber and lots of water in it, it's much harder to, you know, it, it's hard to eat 10 apples where it might be very easy to drink 10 apples worth of apple juice. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. easier. And so there isn't all that fiber in, in the way. And so whole foods principles are really, really important. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. What you've, you've now trained a ton of doctors, you've written a book, you've been on big podcasts talking about this. What do you see in our modern mental health crisis, which is, I think, hopefully everybody realizes that's what's going on. What do you see is really being helped? Like, is Alzheimer's optional? Is dementia optional? Anxiety, mood disorders? This type of diet you're talking about, leaning into the ketone, could we make all of that go away if everybody changed their diet? I don't know. I, I think that I would like to believe, and I'm convinced by the science and the history of, of the matter, that many mental health disorders may be largely preventable. Uh, and particularly Alzheimer's, there's a lot of really robust science there. It's hard to know how many people would be spared mental health mm-hmm. issues if, if, if we had the correct information yeah. about what a brain healthy diet is supposed to look like. But I would be willing to bet that it would be the majority of people would either be able to prevent serious mental health conditions or they would mm-hmm. be able to experience much less serious symptoms from them. And one of the reasons I can say this with some degree of confidence is that if you look backwards in time, we were much m- more mentally healthy in the past yeah. than we are now. And, yeah. and, and so something, something's going terribly wrong. Something and that I, we should be able to figure out and reverse. And our diet has been the thing that, that has changed so drastically, especially in the past 50 years. Yeah, I, I so agree with you. And I'm really troubled by the fact that we just keep pointing the finger at social media and I'm not saying social media isn't the problem, but, you know, I was just, I, I have a membership group called the Reset Academy, and I was just talking about this, that we 
have shiny object syndrome. We tend to look outside of us and say, oh, I'm going to do this, or we tend to blame things outside of us, and we have completely lost the fundamental way in which the human body and brain work. We're so able, we're so willing to outsource our mental and physical health or blame our mental and physical health on another person or our, because our, our favorite politician didn't make it into office or whatever. But we have lost sight of the fact that we are in control of how this thing works. And I am so 100% behind you that the diet has to be the starting point when you're looking at brain fog, anxiety, depression, Alzheimer's, dementia, all of that, the starting point has to be the diet. Why are we not doing this? Why, where's the medical profession? Where are the healthcare leaders? Why haven't we brought this to the culture? And instead, we're just pointing fingers at, oh, they have too much of a phone in their hand or the, the social media is making them crazy. Like we have to come back to the basics. All of, I, I wrote about this in the book as well. I mean, all of these things matter. Of course, it matters, you know, how you spend your time and who you spend your time with. And, and, and it, all the aspects of your brain is paying attention to everything you're doing. And that's yep. a good thing because that means that if you change something in your lifestyle, you're, you're going to get a payoff. And that's beautiful, right? But where we, where we don't spend, mo where we don't spend most of our mental energy thinking, it is, what about the food? And so we all know that, you know, stress, you know, can, can exacerbate mental health problems. We all know that if you, if you do nothing else but sit in your room 24 seven and play video games, that's not good for your mental health. Yeah. We know, we know these things, right? And so there are many different real stressors in the world, but there have always been stressors in the world. Well, said. And, some, and if you look back, some of the stressors that people, our ancestors dealt with were in some ways much worse than some of the things yeah, that we're getting dealing with now. Yeah, <laughs> getting attacked by a, by a tiger or not knowing when you're getting food again. These are bigger stressors <laughs> than somebody you, you, you know, didn't like your post on Instagram. Yes. And, you know, I, I worked in college mental health for many years. Mm -hmm. And one of the trends, very disturbing trends that we saw is that year over year, Incoming students, first year students, were coming into college campuses already taking two, three, yeah. four psychiatric medications, oh, unable yeah. to get through a, a day of college without extra support and special services. We have become so fragile. Our brains have become so fragile that we are not able to function well anymore, many of us. And this is, this is tragic. So, you know, our brains were not designed to disintegrate on such a grand scale. We have yeah. nearly a billion people in the world with a mental health disorder so serious that it's interfering with their ability to function. And that's not even counting all the people who don't qualify for a diagnosis or who have never made it into the system to get a diagnosis. Most yeah. of us are walking around expecting and living with suboptimal mental health. And the yeah. beautiful thing that I, I, if I, if people remember nothing else, there is so much you can do in such a mm -hmm. short period of time to turn that around. And in, in many cases, we have studies now showing tremendous improvement within days to weeks of changing your diet in even very serious, chronic, severe mental That's health, crazy. mental illnesses. I helped publish a study, co-authored a study in 2022, 31 patients, severe, chronic, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, major depression, taking an average of five psychiatric medications, ill already for an average of 10 years, come into the hospital, they start a ketogenic diet, whole foods, mildly ketogenic diet. We're not even talking epilepsy level ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. just essentially a, a, a carefully controlled low carb diet. Whole Foods, within three weeks, every single one of them began improving. 43% of them achieved clinical remission from their so-called treatment-resistant, serious, wow. chronic mental illness. Wow. Can a drug even get that kind of result? No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, the the results that we saw in this study were seven to 10 times more powerful than the medications used for psychosis and depression. 
Yeah. You know, I had a really in conversation with my son when he was in university. He was in a civil engineer program and was struggling. And he told me, you know, mom, all the kids in my class take Adderall. And so I'm having, my brain is having to compete against an Adderall brain. And it this just a, broke yeah. my heart. This is a really common issue. So I, I was saying that I used to work in college mental health. So for 13 years, I worked at Harvard University and then at Smith College, worked with college students, university mm. students. And I'm very, very, very familiar with this, with this issue. And so there were yeah. many students who were coming in requesting Adderall or saying they had ADHD. And some of them actually do have ADHD and some of them actually do better with Adderall. I am not saying that that's not a real thing. What I'm saying is that there were quite a few students also who had come in requesting Adderall or trying to, you know, they, they'd look up the symptoms of ADHD and they come in saying, I have these symptoms. Because ah, they're trying to get the diagnosis. Looking for the Woo. diagnosis and the stimulant wow. prescription, partly because stimulants can help people, people, you know, stay better on top of their studies. I mean, there, is, there are yeah. risks and there are side effects and so forth, but also because they didn't feel like they were competing on an even playing field. Yeah. Because so many students now take Adderall. And and again, I'm not saying that there are that there are plenty of students who actually do better with Adderall, and Adderall can be very helpful in some cases. But my I'd rather ask a different question, which is why? Why are so many students feeling like they need to take Adderall to right. function? That's right. That's a good why point. are their brains not functioning properly? And this is what we really need to get to the bottom of. And so much of this, I'm convinced by years and years and years of research, is environmental in general and diet in particular. Yeah. The yeah. diets that we are eating, starting from a very young age, are destroying our brains from the inside out. Ooh. So well said.